Okay, once you have all of your parts cut out, you see what I have here is basically a kit. I've made my own kit, and I have all the pieces cut out from the templates, and everything's laid out nice and neat. I want to talk a little bit about glue. When you're gluing light ply together, there's you know a host of different things you can use. If you want to use epoxy, you can. You kind of have a certain amount of working time with that before you got to mix up another batch. Um, you can use CA glue, which is like a super glue, and you could use, if you've got a way to clamp, then I, you know, to be on the cheap side, use you some tight bond, just regular wood glue, carpenter's glue. That stuff works really good, and I use that actually in a lot of my builds. You kind of need a clamp to hold each piece in and let it set, and it takes about 20, 25 minutes for it to set, and that works really good. But I want to build this quick, so I'm going to use CA. Now, CA is cyanoacrylate glue. Anyway, I have found mercury adhesives to be the absolute best adhesives when it comes to CA. I've been using these things for about six months now and I love them. You can get these from AtlantaHobby.com or look up mercury adhesives in Google and you'll find it. I'm going to use the M100XF and that is a medium viscosity glue. That's what I'm going to use to put this together on my build. Okay, one thing I want to make note of, you're going to see lots of little tabs and slots in my parts. You know, we've got some little tabs here. Your pieces are not going to have that. Tabs and slots. Um, I use the Flat Boys Flat Printer CNC machine to cut out all my parts so I don't have to hand cut anything. And even though I know that most of you people are going to be building with hand cut parts, you know, once you buy a CNC machine, you won't go back to hand cutting ever again. So you're going to see a few things there that are, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to bring that up to you. The fact that that's why my parts look a little differently than yours. Now, remember, with your paper templates, you have references on where to put everything. Like in the case of this fuselage, we know that N1 is going to glue to the top of this. It's not going to butt up. It's going to actually glue to the top. So I wanted to let you know that up front. It's not glue, it's not going to face it, you know, it's going to glue on top of our one of our fuselage pieces. And N2 is going to go right down the center and your template has center marks. If you're a little off, hey, it's no big deal, but these lines here are all references to show you where these pieces glue directly on top of our fuse pieces. So I'm going to start gluing. So I'm going to use my CA and I'm just going to put a little band right there. Always be careful with CA because it has a tendency to glue fingers and everything else. <laughs> now I'm going to basically just hold that into position and let it set up and if you want to be sure that you're nice and square you can use your motor mount piece and hold it there. Now I can use accelerator uh, kicker if you will but I tried not to do that if I can keep from it because uh, I want because these are plywood parts I want that glue to impregnate in really really good. I don't want it to uh, see it's already slipping. I've got to wait a little bit longer. I don't want it to uh, you know, just hit and, and dry real fast. I want that to be a really strong glue joint. So I let it set and I don't use accelerator. Now, there we go, we're starting to set. Now the next piece we're gonna use is our N2. Now you'll notice I had reference for some little slots, little cutouts here on N2, and those coincide with your Velcro battery slots that we cut to put a Velcro strap in there and you want to be sure that that is more toward the center of the airframe. Incidentally, this part here that we're working on is the front, and the reason it juts out like it does is because we can put a camera there, we can put our battery there. The way I've set these parts up, you can put the battery on the top or the bottom, and you know, it works good. You can also take an inexpensive uh, 600 size electric helicopter canopy, and it'll slide right over, and that's a good visual reference when you're flying. Anyway, at this point, I'm going to also go ahead and glue in N2, and again, I'm just going to run a bead of glue down and slide it right into place, and just drop a bead in, 
being kind of fast and kind of sloppy. I'm going to put a little on the face here too since it butts right up to N1. And for me, I'm just pressing it into slots nice and firm. And we'll let that dry a little bit. Now additionally, we've got our front braces. And those go on these, you know, the front side, looking at it from the nose. And they're going to go in here. And they're going to go all the way out to the edge and glue in. So I'm going to pause the video while I glue these guys in. And then we'll come to the next part. Okay, with N1, N2, and the two front uh, braces glued into place, now we're ready to go back to the rear braces. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to line them up. We're going we're to butt them to this side. It's on top. We're gluing. We're going to butt it up to this side, and we're going to glue those in place just like that. Again, don't worry uh, You know, if, 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 you, if you find it helps you. You can use your motor mount plate because if you've cut it right, you've cut it square and you can use that to help you uh, hold it 90 degrees up. So we'll glue those in next. Okay, now at this point it wouldn't be a bad idea to take our glue and on the inside portions of all these things, uh, all these vertical pieces, wouldn't be a bad idea to lay yourself a little, little bead of glue just to add a little additional strength. And uh, we probably don't need it, but I'm, I'm one to kind of overbuild my projects anyway. If it's built good and strong and a little bit of glue weight doesn't really hurt anything, you won't have to worry about it coming apart later if you smack it on the ground kind of hard. And like so. And that's going to be pretty good. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to add glue to all of the top pieces, tops of these vertical pieces. Add your glue to it. And then you can take your top frame piece and get it nice and square and glue it up. And you might want to put a little bit of weight down on it or clamp it. If you've got these, I like to use these cheap Harbor Freight clamps and like that or even like this and they're going to help you to keep it all in place. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to glue, put glue on all the tops of the vertical pieces, line up my top plate, get it into position and either put some weight on it or clamp it and let it dry. Okay, while we're waiting on our center fuse structure to dry, then we're going to grab two of our two inch square motor mount plates and our two 14 inch arms. And on the side, you know, we've got our holes that we've put in our 14 inch arms, uh, our booms there. So on the opposite side of that, we're just going to take one of our motor mount plates and we're going to center it and we're going to just butt it up to the end and we're going to glue it and clamp it. That's what I've done on this one over here, you see. And I even went so far as to put some reference lines to make sure I had it nice and square. Just At this point, that's just kind of cosmetic, but that's, that's what I've done. So I'm going to glue this one up like that one and we'll be ready to move on to the next step. Okay, now we're ready to build our yaw pivot uh, block. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our shaft, our aluminum shaft. I've gone ahead and set a wheel collar on it. We're going to put one of our washers. I have taken my two blocks and I've inserted my nylon shoulder bushings in. I'm going to slide those on and in place. And I'm going to put my two remaining washers just so that I don't lose them. And now we're going to take our two remaining motor mounts and we're going to glue this in position. Now the reason I've put that shaft in there is that is going to allow me to make certain that I have these blocks I'm not off center in some way and it'll help me to make sure that uh, the whole thing rotates when I'm done. So I'm going to basically position it like that and I'm going to glue these two pieces on 
just like that. Okay, now that our motor mount is complete, you can see we've we've got it all set up, got it in place. Our two washers are on this side, one washer in the collar on this side. And now we're ready to basically, we can mock it up here. I've got two shims, uh, eighth inch material. I'm using a couple of the landing gear pieces, but I'm just setting my stick on top of that, bolt holes up, and I'm going to slide this into it and make sure we've got some pretty good alignment. And I can twist it. Again, if this is a degree or two off, that's the most it's going to be. You're going to be okay because you just need this plate to be able to pivot. So when I, when I see that everything is good, everything's flat, and everything you know, fits pretty good, now I'm going to slide this out. I'm just going to use wood glue on this because wood glue is easier to deal with if I make a mistake. And I'm just going to smear some all over this axle shaft like that and I'm going to slide it in until the bearings till the uh, washers just make contact if you were to use CA there that would be fine but I find that when you use CA if it gets in the bearing and it will, <laughs> if it gets in that shoulder bushing, then your, your system's not going to pivot. So, I'm going to let that now sit up, and we can move on and start making some landing gear. And I'm going to take my remaining plates here. Yeah, keep in mind, mine are tabbed and slotted, but with your landing gear pieces, uh, LG2 is the vertical support as we lay these things flat. LG1 is the other piece. I'm just going to pull up my little template here, but you can see, basically, if I can get that right, we're going to use this as a reference. We're going to glue vertical piece LG2 right there. Now, a good guide here, you can take one of your, one of your previous, I'm going to move this out of the way, one of your previous built arms. The spacing on here is so that these arms are going to go one on each side of our booms. Well, actually, it'll go like that and have one on each side with a vertical support. That's what makes our, our landing gear legs. So if we wanted to, just as a guide, we can flush that up and we can take one of our vertical pieces and glue it as such and then put a little glue across there. Don't get it on your boom. We'll put a little glue across there and then glue that piece on and that helps us that helps us to get the spacing we need because eventually we're going to put those in just like that. If that makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and start gluing up all three of my landing gear legs.